Folks, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Stride Power Meter. If you've looked at my videos for any length of time, I've done several videos on this, both talking about you know what power is, my feelings on the power meter, etc. I think this is maybe the fourth video over the last several years that I've done. So first, real quickly, in case you might not have heard of Stride, power is a bit of a misnomer. So where that comes from is if you're into cycling, almost anybody into cycling has a power meter for their bike. But that's very real power. That tends to be on the crank or on the chain ring or someplace where it is really measuring force when you're doing it. They're also way more expensive than running power meters, but that's where the idea came saying, you know, anybody that's kind of serious about cycling is training with a power meter. Why can't we do the same type of thing with running? So they're using the frame power, but it's a misnomer because it's not actually measuring power. It's a little bit more of metabolic. Actually, just think of it, it's it's a number, and that how that number changes tells you what you should be doing from a training racing standpoint, etc. Now, I said that I've had Stride for many years. The first version I had was a chest strap version, and then they went to the, the shoe version pretty rapidly after that. And one of the main reasons that I didn't really recommend it to a lot of people as something they could really train with is, I thought for the mainstream, it was a little bit too futsy. Lots of things behind the futsy. Maybe futsy just means you're puttering around with things. In particular, getting to your critical pace or your CP or critical power, not pace. Critical power was really important. And I saw a lot of people struggle getting a number that they trusted. And if you didn't trust your critical power, it was really hard to use power as a tool. Well, then a few things changed. I think it was probably about six months or so ago as I'm recording this. They added wind detection. Now, that wasn't absolutely a necessity, but the wind detection was pretty nice because it meant that your power would now vary with the wind at your back or the wind in your face. The big one is they added auto CP, that rather than having to do all these tests to figure out what your CP is, they were going to take a look at your training and say, here's what your CP is. And so I thought that was a big leap forward in getting rid of a lot of the fussiness, but is it accurate? And then finally, they just now came out with a new power center. So power center is when you upload your data to Stride, how you can analyze your um, information. Now, the other one, I think anybody that was used to the other one is going to find the new one maybe a little bit too simplistic. But the fact is, I think the too simplistic, it's, it's not simplistic. I just think it's easier for people to look at and get a little bit from the data compared to the other ones. You had these triangles that shifted around and, and heat maps. And I just... I find the one that they have now a little bit more intuitive, but really the, the auto CP was the, the big thing. So CP, as I said, is critical power. That is kind of like your lactate threshold. Now, it's not exactly lactate threshold, but for the sake of example, let's assume that your critical power and your lactate threshold are kind of about the same thing. And then once uh, Stride detects what your critical power is, it creates training zones. Here's your easy zone. Here's your moderate zone. Here's your threshold zone. Here's an interval zone and here's a repetition zone. So it tells you what your power ranges should be, again, all based upon that critical power. Of course, the big thing is how accurate is that? Well, after having used their new auto CP for, again, I think it's been six months, maybe a little bit longer, I find for me that it's pretty accurate. Now, again, as I said, it's a number, but as that number changes, I agree with that number. I agree when they say, hey, your critical power should have gone up a little bit or maybe it's coming down a little bit. It doesn't change real often, but I've agreed and I found that the number is consistent. I found that that number, at least for me, works right. When I look in their Facebook group, I'm not seeing all kinds of people saying, oh my gosh, this is way off. So I have to believe that for the masses, you are now getting a pretty accurate critical power number, which really depends upon everything. So let me talk about a few reasons why I think using a stride power meter wouldn't be, oh, I forgot to tell you or show you. If you've never seen one, this is what it looks like. This stride power meter you can see is, is quite small. It just gets a little clip. It goes on your shoe. You put it underneath the laces and you clip and snap it in and it should be pointing down. It goes on your shoe, but it, it's quite small. Another feature they recently added is if this loses communication with your watch, your watch will start going crazy. So some people say, gee, what happens if it falls off? Well, if it falls off, your watch is going to say, hey, I lost communication, and you can backtrack and find it. I can tell you I've never had mine fall off, but certainly people do. So let's talk about some reasons why you might not want to consider using a, a power meter. It's a little bit more for road than trail. And the only reason I say that is they are water resistant. You can be out in the rain. You can go through a puddle as long as you don't submerge it, but you cannot submerge it. So if you're on a trail race where you're never going to be submerging it, you're probably going to be fine. But if you're in some type of an event where you might submerge your foot, 
Yeah, it doesn't like that so much. So a little bit more for road than trail, but certainly plenty of people with the trail use it. Uh, it can't adjust your power for heat and humidity. Now that's a disadvantage, but the fact is that's true for everything. It, whether you're using perceived rate of exertion, whether you're using pace, those things don't consider heat and humidity either. You have to make a manual adjustment. Now heart rate will a little bit, but if you've seen my other videos, I'm not personally the biggest fan of heart rate monitor training, and especially since it's a lagging indicator. So even if it's hot and humid, it takes a while for heart rate to catch up with that. So nobody's really solved that issue yet. If it's going to be hot and humid, you've got to make a manual adjustment. Shoe positioning, not necessarily a negative, but something to be really aware of in a couple of cases. So as I said, this needs to be pointing down. It also needs to be on your shoe pretty snug. If it slides, that's going to give some inaccurate data. It needs to stay in the same place. So let's talk about first pointing down. If you're running with the Nike, Nike, Nike Vaporfly Next Percent, those laces curve down. So when you lock it on the laces, it won't be pointing straight down. It would curve towards the end. You have to figure out a way to rig that, and people have done that to get it straightened. If it's pointing awkward like that, you will get misinformation. So you got to futz with that to make sure you get it on right. There are so many people with vapor flies. I got to believe a number of people have figured that out. The other thing is, I, I, for me at least, the shoes I've been getting lately, the, the laces are very thin, flat, and more slick than laces used to be. And so I've got to, again, make sure I have that on there snug. Otherwise, it will slide on those laces and, and you don't want that. So the shoe positioning, you've got to keep an eye on. And then, of course, there's an expense. I believe that the newest version is about $229. That's the price of a good GPS watch. It is certainly not inexpensive. Far less expensive than cycling power meters. Those tend to be a lot, lot more money, but still it, it's, you know, $229. So some of the reasons why I like it and why I now think that it can be a really good, effective training tool for the masses, it's very objective and it's objective right now. So GPS, you can use instant pace. I personally hate instant pace. I find it bounces all over the place. I don't find it to be particularly accurate. Uh, the power is accurate now. I mean, when you take off, you start getting power just like that, and it's correct. If you hit a hill or you hit the wind or the wind is at your back or you're going downhill, you'll see pretty instantaneous changes in power. You can set it for how often it updates power. I use mine for three seconds, but you can do instant. Again, I don't think instant is worth it. Things are going to bounce too much. Three seconds seems good. Ten seconds is another good one, but you can kind of see that. But you get some pretty objective feedback right away what's going on. It updates as your fitness changes. That's that auto critical power. And I think that's a big thing as well. So generally speaking, it takes about four to six weeks for you to improve your fitness through consistent targeted training. And if you've been doing that, what should happen is you should be adjusting after four to six weeks your paces a little bit because you've improved your fitness slightly. You might not, but that's an opportunity to do that. So since this is automatic, if your fitness improves, it's automatically going to calculate new zones for you up or down because sometimes your fitness is going to drop for some reason. So I think that's a, a good way to stay current with your fitness. Uh, consistent, I have found it for me to be consistent. So what do I mean by that? My critical power is 283. It's a number. Whether that's the right number, I don't know. But as it goes up, down, as it changes, I find that consistent. I heard a good example about this, and somebody used the example of a scale. You know, if you get on your scale at home, it'll give you a weight. You go to the doctor's office, it gives you another weight. You go to the health club, you get another weight. Every scale gives you something different. What you really want to say is when I get on whatever scale it is, as my weight changes up or down, does it change consistently with that scale? And the answer with stride is yes. I find whether 283 is the right number for me or not, I don't know. But I find as it changes up and down, it's consistent and it's correct. It can smooth out your running. So what do I mean by that? Let's say you're supposed to run a mile at a 10-minute pace for the sake of example. Well, a lot of people, especially if they have hills, tend to really have a lot of variation in that 10-minute pace. They might hit 10 for the overall mile, but sometimes they're running 930, sometimes they're running 1015. It, it can bounce all over the place. Since you're getting really accurate feedback immediately, if you're supposed to be, say, 250 to 260 for power for that run rather than pace, well, you can really hold it in that range a, a lot more accurately. And then finally, it's more accurate than GPS. I have mine set to my speed source. I should probably set it to be my distance source as well. But test after test has shown 
it is more accurate than GPS. In fact, I know a number of people that own a power meter that do not train with it. They use it because they run on the treadmill a lot and it gives them far more accurate speed distance than they're going to get with the treadmill because they're notoriously inaccurate. So there are some of the reasons why I think that it is, you know, really a good training tool for the masses. But finally, the big question becomes, you know, do you need this? The answer is no. You don't need GPS. You don't need a power meter. All you really need to do is run and be consistent. In the end, running is about duration and your intensity. It's not about speed. It's not about pace. It's not about power. But if you're looking for some tool that can help you be more consistent with whatever you're doing than your perceived rate of exertion, then I think this is a good tool that you could take a look at.